Hi there, it's Lerald, and today I'm going to talk about the Cobalt Assembly, a Dragonflight reputation that sells three different 389 item level rings with extremely useful procs. I'll start by going over the rings first. There are three rings. They all have haste and crit as their secondary stats. One is a damage proc when you deal damage, one has a shield proc when you take damage, and one has a heal proc when you heal. Basically, one's a DPS ring, one's a tank ring, and one's a healer ring. The proc rate on all of them is 2 per minute. They all scale with versatility as far as I can tell. Uh, so the DPS ring does about 1000 DPS, the healing ring does about 1500 HPS, and the tank ring shields for about 3000 HPS, which is very good. At this early point in the expansion, I would say that every single one of these rings is a must have for anyone who's really trying to gear up their character to the max. All three of these rings are way above their stat budget because they have all the useful, you know, haste and crit on them, normal amount of stat budget, but then they add either 1000 DPS, 1500 HPS, or 3k HPS in self shielding. Great. Now let's talk about the Cobalt Assembly rep. They're located in the northern end of the Azure Span. This isn't quite a normal rep grind where you go from neutral to friendly to honored. Uh, you know, all that stuff. Instead, you start at no power, then you grind up from there to low, medium, and high power. You acquire power by looting power items from the Sundered Flame NPCs to the west of the little camp where all, all the Cobalt Assembly NPCs are hanging out. It's in the northern end of the Azure Span, kind of right where the Azure Span, Anarn Plains, and uh, Feldrassus all meet up. The rep items are consumed immediately when you loot. You basically just have a chance to loot the rep directly from the mobs that you kill in the area. The Cobalt Assembly NPCs are all super simple. They have a Flight Master, two rep vendors that sell the rings, of course. Uh, but also they sell some customization options for your dragons, some transmog, and some profession recipes. There's also an NPC named Zavin or Chavin, maybe, with a very basic talent tree. Cobalt Reputation is the most important talent in this tree. It increases your reputation gains with the Cobalt Assembly by 30%. You have to reach low power to unlock Cobalt Reputation, and you should buy that immediately upon hitting low power, since it will speed up the rest of the grind by 30%. I would even recommend tracking your reputation with the Cobalt Assembly while you're doing this grind, just so that you know the moment that you hit low power, you can go over there and pick that up, because you really want to get that first thing. Here's a bit of good news for alts. All the unlocks in that talent tree are account wide, so buy them once on your main and then you're set forever. The rest of the talents are all pretty simple. There's like a cheat death, there's some self healing ones, self shielding, there is one big damage talent all the way down at the bottom, and there's even like literally some useless fireworks. I think they're named uh, non helpful fireworks or something. Now let's talk about how to actually farm this rep quickly, because I've seen people saying you should farm it, but I haven't seen anyone saying how to do it efficiently. If you play in a group, or if you're a tank, you can farm this out in an hour or two. I have farmed it out in less than an hour on one of my tanks. If you're a non-tank, I would recommend trying to find a group using the group finder tool, but you can do it solo as a non-tank. It'll just be a little slower. It won't necessarily even be more dangerous outside of the very start. As you kill mobs in the Cobalt Assembly area, they drop orbs called Wild Arcana. When you click on them, you get a list of powers you can choose from that will buff you for the next five minutes. They do a variety of different things. They'll grant you more haste, more crit, more mastery, more damage. They'll do direct damage under certain conditions, like if you jump. There are a couple of notable powers that I want to highlight here. Cobalt Catch-Up is a power option that you will always have. It causes most of your powers to refresh their remaining duration back to the 5 minute base. And you should use it every 3 or 4 minutes to ensure that your powers stay up the entire farming session. This is really important. I take it basically every time I don't like any of the options that I have available. Fun Detected is a power that increases your chance of getting other power orbs to spawn. It's very good, you should absolutely take it if you get the chance. Trailblazer is a really strong damage dealing power. It causes you to leave fire everywhere you go. The fire burns enemies for a ton of damage. It also burns you. It also slows you. It slows you a lot. It's a good power to pick up early on when your damage is low, but it's also extremely annoying. You can skip it or you can take it, use it initially, then right click the buff to remove it later. 
I've done both methods, and honestly I think I had a better time just skipping it completely, but using it while you're trying to snowball your damage at the start of a farm session is faster overall. So basically choose between whether you want to be fast or uh, uh, not be annoyed. Now let's talk about snowballing damage. You have several different ways to massively increase your damage through powers. The first and most important is the Arcane Mastery power. It appears to stack infinitely or maybe up to 99 times. I've gotten over 40 stacks of it at once and because mastery increases tanks attack power, it makes damage scale to preposterous levels. This only works for tanks, but mastery is still useful for damage dealers too. So I imagine that any class can probably get a pretty enormous damage uh, boost going with enough points in the mastery power, but for tanks it's just very, very insane. I mean, I was literally doing over 300,000 DPS on multiple tanks just by stacking the mastery power. There are some other powers that synergize with arcane mastery as well. Crit chance bonuses are really good and really obvious. Uh, so are damage bonuses. The best damage bonus is arcane compaction. It increases your damage dealt and your damage taken by 15% and it increases your move speed by 15% as well. There's another power that's pretty similar. It's named arcane enlargement. It makes you bigger and increases your damage by 15% as well, but it reduces your damage taken and your move speed by 15%. Again, reduces your move speed. That's no good for me. I don't, I, I would rather take more damage and be moving faster. I do recommend taking health boost or leech powers whenever they present themselves and you don't have something that'll increase your damage or your mastery or your crit. With just a handful of health and leech bonuses, you can easily have like over a million health, 50% leech, and be doing massive amounts of damage. Basically, you'll be unkillable. So taking an extra 60% damage in that case doesn't really matter, and moving 60% faster all the time is amazing. Finally, there's an option called Whims of Fate, which grants you two random powers. I really like this one because it has a chance to give you a buff that you can't get anywhere else. It is, uh, I can't remember the name, but it is a buff to your crit chance and your crit damage. Once you get enough crit chance buffs, you easily have over 100% crit chance, so that crit damage bonus is just getting permanent full value the whole, like, the whole time, and that's terrific. All right, here's a couple of last little suggestions. You're able to interact with arcane orbs that other players spawn, so I would recommend starting off by spending a few minutes just flying around gathering powers that other people have, have popped up. The mobs in the Cobalt Assembly are pretty tanky, and the main reason that this rep farm is so fast is because of how hard your damage can snowball. Like, if you're going out there with no powers at all, you're gonna feel like you're swinging spaghetti around, basically. They, they have like 500, 700,000 health. Snagging a huge batch of powers at the very beginning just to get the ball rolling really helps. Finally, don't leave the area. If you fly out of the area, which I accidentally did on my warrior around 45 minutes into farming, uh, I flew over a mountain, your buffs will all be cleared and you'll have to start back from square one, which will definitely set you back. It probably wasted about 30 minutes of my life. So stay in the area, keep refreshing and snowballing your powers, get tons and tons and tons of mastery, do like 500,000 DPS, and get yourself a really cool ring and some good cosmetics for your dragon. All right, that's it. Have fun farming. Thanks for watching. Bye.